Alex, if you would let me know if there's a chat because uh, that's on a different screen for me. Um, I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually a new workshop for us, uh, which is indicative of the times. Uh, we have lots of you that are going to be starting jobs, uh, both full-time and internship, uh, starting them in a virtual world, both online um, and through Zoom and those kinds of things. So we thought that this would be a helpful uh, workshop for you. Um, we all know that professionalism is important in the workplace. We all understand that depending on the culture of the office you're going into, the levels of sort of professionalism may differ. Um, think about the difference between a law office and a tech startup. But no matter what the environment, there are certain standards that are, are best to keep, at least until you've made a good impression, you've been there a while, um, and you have a lay of the land. What's happening now, uh, we have to fold in the fact that a lot of this is going to be happening, at least possibly for the first few weeks and maybe for your entire internship or a couple of months if it's a full-time position, this will be taking place virtually and online. So we have to think about um, some things that Oops, sorry. We have to think about some things that we perhaps didn't think about before. Um, I'm going to talk about Zoom because that's the platform we use here. But when I say Zoom, I really mean any of these virtual platforms. So WebEx, um, Microsoft, whatever that other one is, <laughs> Microsoft something, all of those, hopefully you'll be able to apply some of the things we talk about today. Um, and I know a lot of you have been taking classes online. Um, some of you may have already been involved in, in different meetings and things uh, through these virtual platforms. But when we're translating this into a work environment and a professional uh, type environment, we need to think about some things that maybe perhaps we didn't have to when it was a classroom experience. So this workshop was born. Um, we're going to jump right in. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about today are how to set up a home workspace, how to get you uh, uh, think about where you're going to set up your, your home office, um, some best practices for Zoom and other, other virtual platforms, as well as some tips for scheduling phone calls, just ways to um, succeed in this work from home atmosphere. And again, you know, if you have questions, pop them into the chat box. I'm happy to discuss as we go along. So um, one of the things I want to talk to you about is that not all of you are in the same kind of situation. So some of these things I'm discussing are perfect world. Uh, some of you are going to be in apartments with five other roommates and you're going to have to figure out how you're going to find a quiet workspace that you can um, dedicate, hopefully. Um, so remember that some of these things, again, perfect world, work with what you can, um, and then you're just going to have to let the rest of that go. But if you have the space, if you can dedicate an area as your work area, um, I would highly recommend that. You'll have all your stuff sort of set up. You've got, um, you know, your, your Wi-Fi connection is close by, so you uh, have, a, have good, reliable connection. Connections. Um, when I was trying to decide where I was going to work when I came home and we were we were transitioning, um, it took me a while to find the right spot. At first, I thought I was going to be upstairs where there was a you know once once we come downstairs during the day, there's a, not that much activity going on upstairs. So I thought that would be a great place for me to be. My Wi-Fi connection doesn't doesn't uh, really work all the way up there. So then the next thought was, oh, the kitchen table. I love this window. I can look out on the pretty backyard. This could be great. That doesn't work either. Daughter's home doing her remote internship. My husband's home working. Kitchen is a popular spot. People are coming in and out. I was working during lunch. They're trying to make lunch. That lasted exactly one day. Uh, so the next spot I was able to sort of claim as my own was in the dining room. 
and this is, so welcome to my dining room. This has worked out really well for a number of reasons. I'm close to our Wi-Fi connection, so it's pretty reliable. Um, it is a space that is not typically used, so I don't have people coming in and out. And the best part about this that I like is there's nothing behind me. So when we do this, I, I don't have an area that I need to clean up or worry about what's on the shelves behind me, what's, what's happening. I know we've talked to you all about um, when you do interviews to be careful about what's in your background. And we're going to talk more about that and lighting and, and some of those other things. Um, you can have that so that your supplies and everything are here. It works out great. You can come in in the morning, you know, turn the lights on, turn your computer on, do your little work day, and at the end of the day, turn your computer off, turn your lights off, and remove yourself. We are working in our living space. So if we can separate that, um, that, will, that will really help you uh, find that work-life balance. Um, so once you get your space set up, we're going to talk about uh, how a Zoom meeting is going to look. It is not going to look like this. That, that is too perfect world. That is not really what our Zoom meetings look like. Our Zoom meetings look more like this. Um, this is not our staff at the CCPD, but very well could be. <laughs> um, we have a very friendly office. Our, our office culture uh, is one of lots of camaraderie. We've all been working for a very long time. We do have one employee who has started the day our office is closed. So it's interesting to see how uh, she is trying to, to um, connect with everybody in the office. And I'm going to talk about some things that she's done that I think are very smart. But what I want to show you here is there's lots of things going on, right? We got, we got children, we got missing people, we've got fake backgrounds, virtual backgrounds. Um, all of this we're going to talk about because you're sending signals by uh, just this. And if this is your first impression in a staff meeting or subsequent meetings after that, you want to be sure it's a good one. So to set up your Zoom from, from the beginning or your WebEx or, or um, whatever platform you're using, again, be sure that Wi-Fi connection is strong. Some of you may end up having to have your workspace separate from where you actually make your Zoom calls so that you can be closer to that Wi-Fi connection. Um, ideally, it's all the same spot, but sometimes that just won't work and, and you'll just have to have your computer um, somewhere else, which is, which is fine, um, or move it somewhere else for that specific meeting. Um, as you'll see, like Brittany has got, thank you girls for this, this Brittany has got, and I'm not calling anybody out here, Brittany has just her name, if you can see that, um, and Alex has a picture of herself. I would suggest, again, because you are trying to get to know people in your office and put names to faces, that you do what Alex has done, Brittany, I love you too, do what Alex has done and put a picture, a um, professional picture, we, you know, go ahead and use the one you have on LinkedIn if that works for you, um, as well as have your name in the box. And Alex, her real name is actually Alexa, but she has Alex in her box so that people know that is her name. Don't confuse it and muddy all those waters with, wait, I thought that was Alex. Does she go by Alexa? Does she go by Alex? Put the name you go by, uh, put a nice picture there so that when you are in um, video off mode, they can see you and, and uh, see your name. Um, I would set up a waiting room. Uh, you guys all came into the waiting room. You do that in settings. I have that for all of my meetings. I actually like that because um, I can let people in when I'm ready. And you're not going to have somebody come in and, and, you know, I'm sitting here with my head down looking at papers or something. You're ready to greet people as they come in. Know when you have a waiting room like that, there is a short delay for people coming in and their audio coming on. Um, I also have my settings set up so that my mic and my video are both off whenever I join a meeting. Again, so that I am 
it kind of in control of that and I can be ready to turn those things on when I'm ready. I just think that's another safety. Um, before I, I had that done, I was uh, connecting to a meeting and realized I had the Google Chrome playing some music and I'm screaming, Google volume down, Google volume down. And before I actually, my face and the, the mic indicated that I was on, I apparently was on because everybody in that meeting was giggling. We could hear you screaming at someone. So good idea just to have that turned off so that you can turn it on when you're ready. If you're in a meeting and you're having trouble with going in and out, you're, you know, it's one of those, your picture's coming in and out or your voice isn't following your, your picture, your Wi-Fi isn't um, stable, go ahead and turn off the video and it'll help your voice at least uh, come through and um, free up some of that bandwidth. That's just a, a little trick uh, if you're in the middle of the meeting and you're having some trouble with that. People will ask, should I do the earbuds or the uh, earphones? That is really a personal uh, uh, preference. I don't particularly like that over, over my ears. My husband teaches class online and he uses those. He likes that a lot. It, it gets rid of background noise. You're just in, in your own little world there and people aren't hearing things that are happening in the, in the house as well. So that's really personal preference. Um, I know lots of people use them and lots of people who don't. And the earbuds, you know, are another option. One thing I want to talk to you about is the optional views you can get. So you can do the grid view, speaker view. Um, right now I've got Heather and Brittany just up at the top. <clears throat> I would suggest, excuse me, I would suggest while you're getting used to uh, everybody in your office, you definitely use the grid view so you can see all those faces and all those names, especially in big meetings really like that but I like to I'm a people person I want to see people um, I think that's just a good a great way to get to know who's who's doing what and when they're speaking about whatever department they're in you're you're getting all of these names and faces together one uh, caveat to that is when I'm in a smaller meeting with perhaps uh, two to three people I will do that speaker view sometimes so it's not like you're looking down or looking in a in a weird way that puts them right in the center of the screen and it looks like you're looking to the person you're talking to and we're going to talk more about setting this screen up um, in a good way um, do not wait two minutes before the meeting is supposed to start to to start finding the the zoom link or or whatever you need to join the meeting um, sometimes that'll take longer than you realize the connection won't work there is nothing wrong with joining a, a meeting early and again you can have your video and your mic off and then you're there and sometimes it's a great opportunity to have visit with some early other early birds so our staff meeting every monday i tend to join a little early because i miss everybody in my office and it's a great way to just chat a little bit you want to be seen so go ahead and join meetings early you're not going to you're not going to pop into a meeting you shouldn't um, and if, if that happens for some reason if somebody's sharing one zoom link you can always just just apologize and just jump right back out but on the whole um, there is no reason to wait two minutes before to join a meeting join early um, also one thing to think about is to turn your computer off occasionally completely shut it down my it guy will love me saying this um, especially when we're using all these zoom calls because it is taking up so much of its memory and making it do all this thinking um, sometimes you'll got you'll join a call and the audio isn't working and that was happening frequently with my intern and what we found out was she just needed to shut down her computer completely let it reset and then come back up what might happen as well when you do that though is that then they're going to be automatic updates and now you got to wait for the updates so again don't do this five minutes before you have a scheduled meeting do it you know first thing in the morning shut your computer down turn it back on whatever updates need to happen um, and then you'll be ready to go for any meetings um, you might even if you've got a number of back-to-back -back meetings turn that off at lunch and, and bring it back up that has has been a problem with some people at the it's just so much for our computers to handle.
Um, so now that we've got all of that, we're going to go back to choosing the perfect settings um, on your virtual image. Here comes Alex. Do you have a question? I do. Um, so someone wrote, my cat likes to make an appearance when they're in meetings. When they shut them out, he meows loudly enough through the door that people can hear. Should she address it um, or just ignore it when she's in those meetings? Okay, I love that you're, you're mentioning that because and especially cats, you know, the, the more you try not to pay attention to them, the more they're going to walk directly in front of you and directly in front of the screen. So um, with that, uh, I talk about this later. If the cat literally is walking in front of you and you're talking, I would just address it, say you're, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, all they want is attention right now. Um, if you're not speaking, I wouldn't address it. Um, and this is one thing I was going to talk about a little bit later. We were in a staff meeting and one of our staff, the dog was literally attacking her with love. It was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. And I made the mistake. I got on the chat and said, oh my gosh, Lynn, your dog is just cracking me up. This is so funny. And then everybody started chatting about this dog. But the problem was another staff member was speaking and really trying to give a report. And it was terribly rude of me to do that in that all the attention went away from the staff member that was speaking and trying to give an update. So I would try and figure out how you're going to handle that because you don't want to, if actually with the meowing in the background, if you had the headphones on or even the earbuds, you might not be able to hear them. Um, that might be one way around it. Um, otherwise, I'm all about communication and people have got to have, and we're going to talk about this, have to have a lot of grace right now. It's real life and life happens and you can do everything you can. I wouldn't um, uh, uh, be lazy, not lazy, but I wouldn't um, be lackadaisical about it and just be like, my cat's going to be here whether you want it or not. Try to handle the situation, but I get that that's, that's a tricky one. Um, so I hope I answered that. We'll talk a little bit more about things that we just need to acknowledge here as well. So when you're considering backgrounds, you know, again, consider what you've got behind you. Try not to have it be too busy. Don't have too much going on. People walking around in the background, that kind of thing. I am not a fan of the fake background. Um, I just think there's that weird sort of shadowy movement going on when it, when you've got a, a pretend background. Um, there are, don't get me wrong, I love the fake backgrounds or, or the virtual backgrounds when uh, it's appropriate. So if the office is doing a happy hour at 4.30 and somebody has the ESO club in the background, I love that. I think it's great. But I would not recommend you join your first staff meeting with a beach picture behind you. I would just have your regular, uh, your, your regular live background if you can. Um, right before I jumped on this meeting, my, my daughter is starting a remote internship and she just got an email that, that specifically said, hey, this is real life. We know you all have lots going on. Come as you are and um, you know, don't worry about cats and backgrounds and things like that. So again, it's knowing your audience and finding the culture there, but try to err on the side of professional Journalism and um, as much as possible until you get the lay of the land. Um, real quick, we're going to talk about uh, again picking out these Zoom things. Lighting is important, angles are important. Um, uh, think about all of these things when you're picking your Zoom spot. There's some funny blogs and, and YouTubers who will talk about how to find the right light. You can walk around the house and do all this. So I did it. And the right light is in absolutely the wrong place in the house. So we're improvising. I'm not trying to be a glamour queen here. Uh, you know, I've got a window to the side of me, which supposedly isn't great. But as long as it's not right behind you and you get that dark shadow figure, that isn't the best thing to do. Um, Eye level to me, I think is really a, a good, easy thing to do. Prop your computer up on some books. You don't want to be that, you know, kind of talking head where you're down here, you know, figure out, move your, move your, see if you can move this around so that you, you're um, centered and it's more of an eye level. Uh, I think that's, that makes a ton of difference. Again, you want to make those connections with people and you're having to do this virtually. So uh, anything you can do 
to, to make that easier for people, to make those connections easier. If you're in a shadow, it's going to be hard. Um, and uh, one of my things is be aware of your hands. Try not to be playing with your hair. Or, you know, every time you, you move and touch things, if there's a bunch of you on the screen, that's what's noticed. So be careful about that. Now again, I mentioned this was a new workshop, so bear with me. I had a lot of fun with this assignment. I'm going to give you some examples. <laughs> this is this talking head that I, I, I don't love. You know, just, just set your computer up on some books or turn your, turn your monitor down a little bit. The opposite of that is when your screen is way below you and they're, they're like looking up. Um, here's the example of in the window. It just, there's such a shadow if you've got a window behind you. Try not to do that. And again, I understand that not everybody has the choices. So if you can make your, your environment and your Zoom call more friendly, great. If you can't, it's okay. Um, this would probably not be okay under any circumstances. Uh, it looks like I'm ready for a party here. Um, and you're looking into my pantry. There's this crazy, messy background of our refrigerator. You know, again, try and keep your background as clean as possible. Another thing that tends to happen is you all of a sudden jump online and you're seeing yourself for the first time and you're like, oh gosh, that is not the way I thought I looked this morning. Don't use the screen as your personal mirror because everybody is seeing you using the screen as your personal mirror. So set up a, a meeting room. You can always pop into that meeting room, your own meeting room, check your, how you look, check your lighting, check how the screen is faced. You know, have you put it properly? Jump out and jump onto your meeting uh, because there is that tendency the first time you see yourself to be like, oh, goodness gracious. Try not to do that. And then bear with me. Again, this was just a fun little thing for me. I have two more. Don't eat. Please don't eat during uh, any meetings unless you are on site and your boss has provided donuts that you do not need to be eating. Well, and I think we had a lunch meeting one time where we actually were supposed to brown bag and bring our lunch to the video, uh, to the Zoom meeting. Other than that, don't eat. Um, and when you do get on site, you know, don't go into a staff meeting munching on your dry Cheerios, not professional. Coffee is acceptable, um, but any other eating can wait until after your meeting is done. Um, all of these examples, by the way, have happened. Uh, don't join a video meeting in, uh, you know, a hoodie with a blanket wrapped around you, laying down on your couch. Some of these things your professors may have let you do, but that is not going to be acceptable in the workplace. So again, know your audience and, and choose professional over, over casual. So, so many things to think about. A couple other little quick things. I know I'm, I'm running a little long on time. Mute button gets everybody. Uh, again, I highly recommend you always have your mute button on until you want to talk. So you're not getting that background noise. You're not getting the cat. Um, but remember too that you need to turn it off when you're speaking and in your settings you can set up your space bar so that that becomes your mic on and off which i find very helpful uh, just know that if you're in the chat box you need to come back to the screen to have the space bar work but that is helpful um, Again, that chat feature, be careful of that. Uh, some meetings will use this as a way of uh, question and answers. So here's an example, because Alex is going to ask a question. I was about to say, you've segued beautifully into this question, and I was holding it. Um, when asking or responding to questions on Zoom, would you advise always speaking when it's possible, or is it OK to use the chat box instead? OK, so this is a great question, because there have been some meetings I've been into that honestly, the chat has been more valuable than the meeting. The, the conversations that are happening between the professionals in the chat box is super valuable. And there's just so many people on that call that to have them all responding on uh, video would be virtually impossible. Um, so a town hall meeting, some of those kinds of things, it, it makes more sense really to use the chat or the Q&A. There's also a Q&A feature. Um, but you want to be careful if it's a smaller meeting and you're having these side conversations uh, in that it's not respectful to the people that are talking. So again, you're going to get a feel for what that, it, there's no one answer across the board. You're going to get a feeling for 
the culture of the groups that you're working with in this Zoom call or WebEx call, and you're also going to get a feeling for the different types of meetings. So some meetings that will be very appropriate where others it may not. I know that's not a very clear answer, but um, it really depends on the situation. I like the chat feature for some things. Um, just know too that people can see you doing that. You know, turn everything off, and I, I might have missed it or here. Uh, turn your emails off, turn your uh, phone off. If you have other monitors, turn those off. You really don't want to be distracted when you're in a meeting because people see that. People can see that you're multitasking, which isn't always a good thing. Yes, you want to be very productive, but you also want to be paying attention to whoever you're talking to. Um, so I like to just turn everything off, off, plus that dinging. Like right now, if I didn't have my email, my phone, and everything turned off, you would hear those email notifications coming through which is which is just annoying to everybody else that's on the on the call or in the meeting. Uh, one other thing to think about with chat is if you have last your last chat you sent to the group, like whatever that was, and then oh I want to send a funny to Brittany. Be very careful that you've sent it just to Brittany if that's what you're doing. This is that. Um, Repo reply all accidentally you send it to everybody and you just meant to be sending it to one person you it's very easy to get confused in that chat if you're sending it to everybody or if you're sending it to one person and there have been more and more stories about things that were meant for one person that went to all so use the the chat feature with um some some caution please turn your video off if you have to get up for any reason don't just leave <laughs> That's it. Just turn your video off for a second, and then when you're ready and you come back and you're seated, turn it back on. Be sure to turn your mic off as well when you do that. Um, you can still hear what the meeting's going on, and you know if a child's come over or something, you can take care of that and then come back into the meeting. And then this was where I was talking about the children, the dogs, and the dad. Again, we are. It, it's not like that BBC video where the kids come into the background and it, it made national news. This is happening now. This is, we all understand that everybody's working from home. They're small children, they're animals, they're, they're multiple people trying to, to work in, in small spaces. So, um, you know, we talk about giving grace, uh, just explain it. I was in a uh, call where a woman, and it took me a while, and I, I, obviously I wasn't giving grace like I should, but she, her video was, was like from here to here, and then the name was Justin, and she obviously wasn't Justin, and I kept thinking, does she realize that you can't see her, and it was just kind of, and finally when it was, she was going to speak, she said, I'm so sorry, y'all, I don't know what you're seeing, and, and the name is probably wrong on here, but my computer died, and I'm on my son's like laptop or son's iPad or something. So, you know, and they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. No worries, that's fine. So, you know, communication, just just let people know what's happening. You know, I'm sorry, my Wi-Fi is terrible. I'm not gonna be able to join you with video. I'm just gonna be on phone. Fine, absolutely fine. Whatever it is, you know, just, just let people know what's happening. And um, most of the time that's not a problem at all. Uh, some common courtesies, this is where we're talking about turn off your email, your, your computer, all those things. There is a slight delay. So when you're turning off your mic, turning on your mic, it's, it's more common, it's easier to talk over people in these virtual settings than it would be if we were all together. It happens, just be aware, I'm starting to get more and more used to it and, um, and just knowing there's that little bit of delay, just be aware of it. And if you accidentally talk over somebody, just apologize, you know, we're all getting used to it. Practice your screen sharing, that can be tricky. Um, know that if you share your browser, something on your browser, all those tabs are also gonna be shared. So whatever you have open is going to be seen. So be either just close all those browsers, which is probably the best advice and have only one thing open, um, or be aware of what you're sharing because that, that can be seen. 
Um, if you're hosting a meeting, be sure, like Brittany did, set the expectations. Hey, you know what? We really want to have everybody, to, if possible, to have your video on, or you know, it's fine to have your video off. We're going to turn the chat feature off, or we're going to have it on, and feel free to use it. Um, you know, give them the agenda if it's if it's a size where you can actually um, introduce people that don't know each other. Again, just like you're in person, common courtesies. Um, one nice thing, which I didn't realize until I actually cut some people off, is if you're hosting the meeting, be the last one off. Don't just real quick hit that end meeting, because some people might want to have a quick discussion before it's over. But in that same, uh, same line of thinking, don't linger and eavesdrop in on people's conversations if it's just time for you to get off. Sometimes the host uh, will stay on and well that went well yeah people seemed really interested you know whatever um, if it doesn't pertain to you go ahead and get off um, and then security if you've set up the meeting and you're the host zoom has added some secure uh, zoom has and i'm sure the others have as well have added some security uh, don't publicize your url out there on social media or, or anything where other people can get it like we do with these we send out an rsvp um, so be aware of that and then you can also turn off you can hit the security and not allow anybody else in the meeting once you've started and you know you've got everybody there you want one last thing sorry i know i'm going a little late is uh be aware that screenshots can be very helpful so you can take the participants and open that up and screenshot that and then you know, uh, send a quick email to some folks in the company. Hey, we were on the same call together. It was great. I was wondering if we could um, have a have a quick meeting about blah, blah, blah. Or you can connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, it's a quick, easy way to, to get everybody who was on, on the call um, in one quick, quick screenshot. I would, if you're going to take a screenshot of the pictures and the people, again, be courteous to the to the people on your call and let them know that you're doing that. Hey, y'all, I'm going to take a quick picture. Would everybody mind waving? We're going to use it on the social media or I'm, I want to send it to my mom or whatever. Just let people know if you are taking a picture of them, just like these meetings will let the, the participants know if it's being recorded. It's just a uh, common courtesy. Okay, and very quickly, I want to just talk to you about schedules. I think it's so important when you're working from home to set up a routine. Treat it like you're going to the office. Get up at the, you know, six o'clock or whatever you have. Get up early, get some exercise in, get dressed for the day, get your cup of coffee, go to your little workspace, turn your lights on, you know, and be ready for the day. Treat it as if you were going into the office. Um, I, we definitely do this here and I would recommend for you all if, if you know I've got a 12 o'clock webinar uh, so that people aren't coming in, hey, you want to have lunch? It's noon. Oh, I'm on a webinar, you know, or whatever that is. Um, the other thing we try and be careful is if we all have a Zoom call at the same time, we're aware of it because our Wi-Fi might not be able to handle it. Um, so just that kind of thing, communication between the people that are in your house so that they know when you have an important meeting, when you might have some free time, those kinds of things. The other thing, um, be sure to take some breaks this is a totally different atmosphere in that you know I come in I sit down at eight o'clock and literally time goes by so fast it's noon and I have not stood up which is not healthy um, and not good for anybody what's happening now is because we're not in an office people aren't popping in and hey can you help me with this or ooh, can I show you something all of that is happening through our screens or our phones. So we're staying in our one little spot as, as opposed to you know, getting up and going to meetings and doing different things. So I would almost set an alarm to at least just stand up once an hour, you know, try and get away from your computer and be sure to try and um, you know, take a lunch. Uh, studies are indicating that we are working longer and harder on average at home than we were doing in the office. Not that I wasn't, super productive in the office but we're just not being called away doing different things and so suddenly we've spent four hours and we haven't gotten out of our chair so and there and it's not good ergonomical chairs or whatever like we have at work this is a dining room chair you know so think about all of that to keep you healthy be aware just like you would at work of time zones and lunch hours uh, people have small children at home you know they're they need to have um, 
breaks as well. So to make a good impression, communication is key. Communication is more important now, more important now than ever. Uh, we don't have those face-to-face -face interactions quickly at the copy machine. Oh, I'm working on such and such. You have to keep your, your team in, in the loop. You have to keep your bosses aware of what's happening. Um, some of these mentors may not have ever mentored remotely. So this is gonna be new for them. If they're not reaching out to you, you need to reach out to them. Hey, I just want to give you an update of what I'm working on. This is going really well. I was wondering if I could ask some questions about this. Could we meet? Um, all of that is so important. Responsiveness is going to is just critical in this kind of environment. If you're not responding, and they're not seeing that you're at a desk down the hall, they're not sure you're working. So you need to be responsive. Some companies are keeping track of employees through, you know, mouse movements. Some are, uh, you know, just a once a week um, uh, report. So whatever your, your company or your, your uh, team is doing, be sure that they are aware of what you're doing um, and, and how you're filling your day. Um, be able to try and contribute as much as you can. So if you're on these calls, I highly recommend, again, being on the video and not just uh, on the phone. Uh, to me, out of sight, out of mind, I, I'm looking at the screen full of people, and those are the people I'm thinking about, and I'm not thinking about the little people up here that are on just by video. You are trying to make an impression, so be there, um, be visible as much as you can, and these are the times when you're on these kinds of calls that you can be visible. Uh, be careful about uh, CCing and blind copying. Lots of companies have specific policies and procedures. I have a friend who owns a company that does a lot with government agencies. Every email that goes out has to be CC'd and her, they, her company has set it up so that anything CC'd goes to a specific email for her. So it doesn't, you know, drown her inbox, but she is being copied on absolutely everything. Um, and on that light, you wanna be careful about, you know, reply all, don't reply all. Thanks, this was super helpful. Everybody doesn't need that. Emails or, or everybody's inboxes are so full right now. Send it to the one person who sent it out. Thanks, this is super helpful, but not everybody on that chain needs that in their inbox now. So be careful about that. Again, check the culture, see what, what's happening, um, but, but be careful about being um, too happy with the, with the CCs and the, and the blind copies. Uh, where if you see gaps or, or areas that you can help, volunteer. Try and take the initiative. If you see something, uh, ask if you can do it or, or give your two cents. Again, it's, it's these little um, sort of unintentional signals that you're sending that are going to be making impressions. It's the details. And we're under very different circumstances, so that every little tiny detail matters. Your punctuality, your your dress, your writing style, typos and writing errors, your attitude about everything going on. All of these things are gonna start painting a picture of who you are and, and what you're gonna what value you're gonna have to the company and what you're giving giving to them. So you've got to think about all these little things and I am totally running over. Be flexible, have lots of grace, life happens. Um, let me know. Do we have questions? Any other questions, Alex? I'm sorry I ran so late. Hold on, sorry, my video's trying to pop up. Um, you do not, but does anybody have any last minute questions for Lisa? As my husband turns on, because I am working in the kitchen. I'm sorry for that. Does anybody have any last minute questions? You can go ahead and type them in the chat box if you do. I am so sorry I um, went long, um, but I do think it's just a whole different world, um, and you guys are going to do great. You've got this. Let us know if you need anything. We're here to help. I see six. Does that mean there are more chats? You, you are just getting lots and lots of thank yous. Okay. Okay. Thank you all so much. All right. And Brittany, do you have any last minute information for everybody before we tell um, everybody? Yeah, I was just say real quick, if you'll um, visit our events page, we just put up some workshops that we'll have throughout the summer. So if you guys want to RSVP for any of those like you did for um, this one, we will send you the Zoom meeting links.
And thanks so much for being here, everybody. Thank you. I went to see all my thank yous. <laughs>